What's up, everybody? <laughs> I, I think I'm live. Am I live? You guys let me know. Am I live? Someone said, hi, Tracy. So maybe they can see me, right? Can you guys see me? Yay. <laughs> What's up, everyone? I'm so excited for today's live stream. I've been wanting to do this for a couple of weeks now. And I finally like mustered up the nerve to do so. <laughs> so just bear with me if I mess up because I'm still learning the ropes of, you know, live streaming on YouTube. So yeah, but I have a really special project for us to work on today and it's called a hotel pillowcase. And I'm not gonna be able to say hi to everybody I'm just going to kind of glance over because I really do want to get into the meat of tonight's live because it's got so much value in it and I just can't wait to share it with you. I even have a new um, way to finish off the end of the pillowcase, how we used to do Those of you that know how to make the magic burrito pillowcase, I found a new way to hide the seams on the flap for the hotel pillowcase. And I'm super excited to show you all. I was like, wow, we need to be able to hide these seams. There's gotta be a way. And I figured it out for us. So I'm gonna be showing you that tonight. So I'm gonna be showing you two separate pillowcases. I'm gonna show you first the basic. Now the basic hotel pillowcase, what makes it so special? First of all, I found it in a hotel and I was like, hmm. Now I've stayed at a lot of hotels and I'm sure you have too, but have you ever noticed that some of the pillowcases are encased all the way on the end? Now I know some of the people in Europe, I think they have told me in the comments several times that they already do this and use this method. They actually sell their pillowcases like this. Well, in the United States, we are like 10 step back, 10 step backward when it comes to pillowcases. I believe that wholeheartedly after making and using the hotel pillowcase. So the hotel pillowcase is this right here. This is one of that I made earlier this week and you can see here it's got this flap on the inside. This is the flap and then this is the pretty outside and this is how I made the magic roll-up burrito pillowcase in a tutorial that I have that I will link down below. And oh my word, I think I forgot to <laughs> put the links live on the handouts, the free handouts, but I'm gonna do that right after this. So this is what it is. It keeps your pillow in there really good so that it does not come out. You know, when you're wrestling around in the bed, you know, I don't know how y'all sleep. Sometimes I get a little crazy, you know, in my positioning, <laughs> you know, so, your pillow will not fall out, trust me, it just won't. And this is the one with the pretty, and I'm calling this the trim side. So this is the pillow, the basic hotel pillowcase with the trim. And then this is without the trim, which is just all one piece of the same fabric. So that's the difference in, whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit my mic there. So that's the difference between the hotel pillowcase with trim and the hotel pillowcase without trim. Let me put those live real quick because that's important. I want you all to make sure that you have your own copy. It's totally free. Um, and it's going to be the setup for the standard size for the, um, for the trim and for the basic. So you're gonna need to know the sizes for that. So let me get those live real quick. Sorry about that. See, that's one of those things that I just, you know, don't know sometimes to do. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit publish on that. Let me grab the link and stick it in the info box here. So I'm grabbing it, share, very good. Let me go over to my studio and get that in there for you guys because I definitely, you know, want you to have that to follow along. So let me just find it and sorry guys, I didn't mean for all that. Okay. All right, if someone can go down in that info box for me and check and make sure that that's live, that would be awesome. So let me go back 
and I see that, no, it's, let me hit refresh. Make sure you hit refresh too. So that way you'll be able to see the link to get the download. For measurements, download here. Yes, I see it in there. Someone check it for me. Uh, yes, I just glanced. Hi, Betty. Hi, Sister Chick. Hi, everyone. I'm not going to be able to say hi because I want to get right into the tutorial, but I want to make sure that you all have what you need there. And it's just a free download of what we're going to be doing. You know, it's no big deal. These are so easy that I'm going to be making them here online and live, and you're going to be amazed. Trust me. So, okay. So I have my cheat sheet back here. <laughs> I blew it up so I could see it, but it's the same thing that you're going to have if you download that and you have it in front of you. So we are going to do the no trim version first. Now, the nice thing about this is that you can cut two pieces long, long wise out of two, what is it, two, yeah, two yards, say you have two yards of fabric and you just really, you wanna use them, right? They've been in your stash forever and blah, blah, blah. We all know the story, right? I have a ton, I have a ton of fabric in my stash. I have to use it. I mean, really, we have to use this fabric. We just don't want it hanging around. Otherwise, we're gonna be like my mother, so to speak, where she has all this fabric and she could never sew with all of it. And then it all got landed in my lap, which is a blessing for me, no doubt, because you know, I love fabric too. But there was so much fabric still, and it still is at my mom's house that I just did not take yet. I mean, she's got probably 20 or more bins full of fabric that I just quickly went through and just chose what I want, you know, and that's stuff that I haven't even showed you guys. So I've just got way too much. So just go into your stash. I know you got a couple yards of fabric that you can play with, right? So what you're going to do is you're just going to take and cut it in half lengthwise, and you're going to cut it 65 inches long by 18 inches. So you're going to end up with this long piece. Now remember, this is the basic no trim. So it's really long, 65 inches by 18. Now the first thing you're going to do is take one end, let me see, I'm looking at my cheat sheet. <laughs> you're going to take one of the short sides and press a half inch fold on one of the short sides. So let's see. So you're gonna take the one end and I did pre-press some of this because you know what? We gotta have some stuff that's, you know, pre-done, right? And this loud thing right here, this is my Laura Star. If y'all hadn't noticed, <laughs> I do have a brand new Laura Star and I have a link for this. Y'all need to check this thing out. Look at this. This thing is powerful. <laughs> it runs on dry steam and yes, it totally irons. Like just make sure that you're pressing the spot that you really want to press because it's going to be really hard to get out the Laura Star press that you just put in it because it's really nice. So, so you're gonna fold down one of that 65, or what is it, 65 inches in length, you're, and eight by 18, you're gonna fold that down about a half an inch, you're gonna make a half an inch hem, and then you're going to press that. So I folded once, and I folded again, and then I pressed it. And then we are going to top stitch this. Wait a minute, are we? Wait a minute, hold him and press five. Okay, whoops. <laughs> so after you fold that five, or I'm sorry, that half inch hem, you're then going to measure and fold that same hem. Let me come over here so you can see. Because I pre-press this, so I may not have to do any pressing take the side that you hemmed. And if some of you have problems seeing on your screen right now and you're on your phone, take your fingers and pinch it open and come real close so you can see this. If some of you didn't know, you can totally pinch that on your phone to see close up. So just don't, you know, don't come close up over here. <laughs> Make that hem, half inch fold, half inch fold again, press. Then we're going to take this and go five inches over, fold that, and we're going to put a memory crease right there, okay? Now, 
This is, wait a minute, is that right? I think I did it wrong. Wait a minute. Oh my word. Uh, wait a minute, fold that hem five inches, double stitch on hem side, press half. Oh my goodness, I knew this was gonna happen, right? I need my ruler, see? Wait a minute. Okay, it was this side that I needed because one side is longer than the other. I pre-pressed it, so I'm sorry. Scratch everything that I just said. <laughs> if I was editing, I would totally edit this out and start new. But since it's live streaming, I can't, so just love me, okay? <laughs> Take the one side and press a half an inch hem once and crease that, okay? Fold it over one time so it's going to be a raw edge sticking out. Then you're going to take that end and you're going to fold it five inches. Okay, I hope that makes sense. We're not going to do a double fold on this one. That's on the other end. So fold once and then fold five inches. Are you guys with me? I'm so sorry. Okay, now you're going to flip it over to the right side. So this is what you have right here. Pinch it close if you need to. I folded that in, raw edge. That's all that is. Fold in a uh, half an inch and then fold it five inches. Put a crease. Now this is the part where you're going to just feel where that ledge is because we want to top stitch the right side of this fabric. And we want to do a double stitch because double stitches just look so nice, right? I mean, I think they do. They just look more professional. So all I'm going to do is come to the very edge of where that ledge is. I can feel it with my finger right here. And I'm just going to top stitch. Now it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just, you know, try though, try to get a straight line. Okay, and then you're gonna come back to where you started and you're going to sew another top stitch line right next to that line that you just sewed. Maybe. <laughs> so, I don't know if y'all can see that, if you pinch your fingers, and I know the sun's in kind of in the way, but there's a double top stitch right there. This is gonna give the illusion of, you know, or not really an illusion, it's gonna be the end of this pillowcase, right? But it's just not going to have a trim, that's all. Now you're going to flip this to the other side. Now make sure that you see where we folded this side in. Now we just follow along this way and now we fold in on this raw edge, on this end, fold in a half an inch, press, fold in another half an inch and press. You're making a hem, that's all you're doing. On the other one, we made a big hem. That's why we left that first fold raw edge. So now we folded and we've pressed this crease in at a half an inch. We've made a half inch hem. Now we're going to take and Let's see, let me just make sure. <laughs> okay, so what you're going to do is press that and then my directions say come in about six and a half inches and I'm hoping that's what yours say too. <laughs> so you're gonna take this and, am I right? No, you're not gonna take that. I'm so sorry. I don't know why I'm so nervous doing this live. I, I'm so sorry. Just forgive me. So we are going to top stitch this. So this is the end that we're folding in at six and a half inches, but we're not folding it just yet. I love you guys. Sorry. So we're going to do a double top stitch on this one. Okay. So I'm going to feel right along here where the edge of that fabric hits on that hem. And I'm going to top stitch.
Okay, and now we're gonna do another double top stitch, another top stitch, making it a double is what I mean. Okay, so now I have my double top stitch there. I think what's messing me up is that I had everything pre-folded and pre-creased prior to this, you know, live. So I'm thinking that's why I'm messing up a little bit. So forgive me. All right, let me move, let me move this. So now what you're going to do is take that that you just top stitched and you're going to fold it in toward the wrong side. We want the right side facing out for this next step that we're gonna do. So you're gonna take that and fold that one that you stitched across here or across there. You're gonna fold that in about six, six and a half inches. And then you're going to take this piece and fold it. Hopefully you can, see, no, you can't see. Okay, hopefully you can see that. You're gonna take and fold it up to meet this. So oh, did you see that, what I just did? Oh gosh, it's hard to see on here. So I've taken and folded this end right here that has the short hem in it, the half inch hem, folded that in six and a half inches. And then I'm bringing this piece up where it has that big five inch hem in it. I'm bringing that up to meet this. And I'm gonna make sure that there's creases in all of them. And I'm just gonna, you know, shake it out. So they're meeting up. And then this is on a fold down here, right? Now, when you measure this, let me get out my handy trusty measuring tape here. When you measure this for a standard pillowcase, and I forgot to measure mine, I will measure my pillow before I'm done here. This right here should measure approximately 25, 25 and a half inches in length when it's all folded together with the right side out. Now, this is what I want you to see. Hopefully you can see, let me go this way. So when I have it like this, this is gonna be the opening right here where the pillow actually goes in, right? Right here. So I should have this bigger fold right in here that's gonna keep that pillow in there. So it's gonna go nicely just like that. The next step we're going to do with right sides out is we're going to sew an eighth of an inch on both sides. Now, I would pin pin for this because you know you just you just need to. So we're going to pin there at the end and we're going to pin here on this end and hopefully you can see. Are there any questions so far? <laughs> I'm so sorry. When I don't do editing, it's so hard. Hi, Denise. Good Sunday to everyone, yes. Ooh, Valerie has a couple yards of flannel. Flannel, break them out, Val, break them out. <laughs> I have to say hi to Miss Di. I like the Laura Star U system. Yes, Laura Star, it's, it's, it's a heavy hitter for sure. I mean, anyone who has one loves them, right? So we're gonna pin, and I'm gonna pop some pins here too, just in the center, just to keep things, you know. I'm not gonna go overboard on my pins, you guys. I'm just gonna do a couple spots. But I am going to start at the top of where my opening is. I'm gonna start sewing. Let me get this out of the way. So I'm gonna sew about a little bit, eighth of an inch, you know, or so. I am gonna back stitch. Just a tiny eighth of an inch down both sides. Um, I saw somebody said wash your flannel. Yes, uh, go ahead and wash your, if you're making pillowcases, it's definitely good practice to pre-wash them, absolutely. So 
So you're going to go down an eighth of an inch on the other side. Oh gosh, I may be way off over here. Oi vey. <laughs> So yeah, so let me trim this because this, I, I didn't realize I had some overhang here that I'm not even catching the, I'm not even catching it. Let me grab a ruler, you guys. Things are about to get real here. <laughs> this is the hard part about um, doing live shows. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that what I had was overhang on the back and so I'm not even catching some of that fabric in that seam allowance so yay it is what it is so I'm going to go back in here and retrim a little what I'm trying to do is make a French seam which some of you probably realize that's what I'm trying to do but I'm showing you you know it's a bad I guess show of it <laughs> Okay, so that ought to do it. All right, back to the drawing board. So now with no pins in, I'm just going to sew. <laughs> so I'm going to go back and try that eighth of an inch again. I could made it a I could have made it a little bit wider than 18 inches and made a quarter inch so there instead of an eighth but that's up to you you can do that if you want okay now if you have any strays sticking out now would be the time to cut those off because we're going to turn it right side or wrong side out here in a sec so I'm just cutting some strays off because I don't want them to show through. Okay. <laughs> My word. It's like the worst cutting job ever. It looks like a hack job. That's what they call a hack job. <laughs> okay, next we are going to turn it. Yeah, so a quarter inch. Yep. Oh, and trim it down. I know, I know. I should have done that, Alexandra. I should have done that, no doubt. But, you know, it is what it is, right? Now, I probably didn't grab my, my pokey tool, did I? I didn't. I have no clue where that's at. Oh, here's one. So you're going to turn it. Now, this is where I'm going to teach you that new trick that I told you at the beginning to where we're not going to see that inside French seam like we did on the other pillowcases. I do have a link to my other uh, tutorial on the Magic Pillowcase. It's uh, the hotel one, but it does not use this uh, tip right here to make that French seam not show. So once you get it inside out, it should look like this, right? You have this kind of flappy thing over here. Then you're going to take this flappy thing and you're going to fold it over so that there is no more opening, if you know what I mean. What do I do with that poke thing? And so I'm gonna take and just poke these corners out where I turned it. Did you all catch that new little, new little part? Yes, Nancy, I got many mistakes I can show you all for sure. No doubt about it. <laughs> but you guys are so sweet and kind to me always. So, you know, it is what it is. So I've taken that and I'm going to get rid of this. Oy. Let me get rid of this. Get my Laura Star. I'm rolling right over top of that pillowcase, but that's okay. So with it like this, I'm going to pull out these and kind of with my fingers. Remember I said, pinch with your fingers on your phone to look close. And that is not out. That, see, that corner's not out. So what I'm going to do is grab me a pin, right? Just any pin. And I'm going to pull this out. 
that corner because I don't want that to be sewn funny there. I want that corner to go out as far as it'll go. Check both of them just for GP. Remember what GP is? I taught you guys that in one of my videos, right? Who can tell me? Let me know in the comments. What does GP mean? We're going to do it for GP. <laughs> and it's not doing it for the Gipper. <laughs> oh, see, I got thread sticking out everywhere. So you're going to push these out with your fingers. Okay. And it's awkward for me because I am like in a two by two spot right now. Get your Laura star, get the steam out of it. And I am literally going to, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to put that down. See, I'm pushing that seam to the very edge and I want it to be nicely pressed out because I'm going to be sewing that quarter inch down the side here. And I want to make sure that I get, you know, no pieces in there that should be. I want to make sure that seam is just totally rolled out. That's going to make for nice, neat work, you guys. This one step right here, if everyone did it and they're sewing, I mean, I'm telling you, your work would look mm, beautiful. But you don't know what you don't know, right? I mean, you got to know it first before you can do it. So, you know, so I'm showing you. <laughs> so again, I'm going to take this seam, oh, there's threads everywhere. Take this seam with my finger, and I'm going to push it down into my sewing mat here, my uh, pressing mat, I mean. And I'm literally rolling that seam as far as it'll go. I mean, I'm literally yanking at it. Do that because little tiny pieces of the edge can get stuck in there, and it's going to show in the end result. I'm telling you, so do it. <laughs> Roll it out. And just give it a quick press. You don't want to set that seam totally. You just want to give it enough of a press that you are, you know, going to be okay. Pull it out. And you can kind of tell, too. You can kind of feel it. I mean, this is not going to be a long live, either. We are, like, halfway done already. <laughs> so now, hopefully, you guys can see. I know the sun's coming in. Now remember, we have this all tucked in. There's no opening. We took that flap and laid it over now because we are going to encase these seams up here, which in the old version, I left those that way. I mean, I think someone told me at one time, hey, you can fold the flap the other way and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I didn't understand at first until I tried it with these this new version. And I was like, oh, the light bulb went off. And there you have it, you know, it's crazy. I think was this one, yeah, this one right here, if you wanna blow up and pinch your fingers right there, you don't see the seam in there. It's really, really nice, really nice. It's a nice technique. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna encase that a quarter inch or maybe a little more than a quarter inch, depending. I don't know how much you, you know, your seams might be a little wider. I don't know. I'm definitely gonna back stitch. And just for reference, I'm on a two. Did anyone tell me what, yes, good practice. That's a good one. General practitioner, that's closer, Deb. Did anyone say, uh, wait a minute, GP, general pra Is that it? Oh my God, no, general purpose, I think. I think I said it was general purpose. <laughs> my brain, I don't even know. Is that what I said in the, my video the last time? I don't know. I think I said general purpose. Just let's do it for GP, for general purpose. But those are all good ones, though. And I think I looked it up after that. Didn't I die? I can't remember. Okay, let's see. So I'm encasing this seam. Okay, so that one's done. Seam number one, I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna sew from the top down again. I'm encasing that seam, I'm making a French seam. Oh, dear. Okay, next step, 
we're gonna unleash this, okay? <laughs> I mean, you trim your stuff. I mean, I wasn't gonna take the time to do that, but maybe I will. And then I won't have to go back and do it later. I usually use small nips, but these were like close to me. If Miss Tracy doesn't know, we are all right. Yes, you are right. I'm sure you are. <laughs> so now you're gonna just take that flap that you, you know, flapped over <laughs> or whatever, and you're gonna pop out those corners, right? And then you're going to turn this right side out. Let me stand up for this so I have full gravity control. <laughs> Now I'm going to push my fingers through here. Where's my pokey tool? And grab this. Poke out your corners. Now if you by chance see some little, you know, threads popping through from the French seam, just trim them off. It's no big deal. You're not going to fray. Nothing's going to come apart. Like I see a couple here, but you know what? I'll take care of those, you know, after. But what I want to show you is this. I want you to take, and uh, if you can, pinch your fingers on your phone so you can see this. Look at that. A beautiful seam that you cannot see. Now, yeah, if you go farther down, you will see where your French seam takes over, okay? But you're not going to see it, you know, once your pillow's in there. And I will put a pillow in here. We'll put this one in here. This is my Josephine's pillow that <laughs> she uses on my couch my uh, grandbaby. So we'll have to make sure we put this back on there, the mini mouse. But so let's see. So some of you might be wondering why did I do that top one there? It's just for the illusion. You see the double seam there? Even though the flap is down, it literally looks like a regular pillowcase, but we know it's not, right? We know that it's uh, had some magic done to it, right? <laughs> Yes, Teresa Louise, these are awesome, right? Mine have a little bit of a spin on them tonight. This is one piece of fabric. Hi, Jackie. Sorry, I didn't get to say hi to everybody. Okay, so once you get your pillow in there, you know, get it in there straight. Don't be like me. Ugh. Okay. Then you see this would be a normal pillowcase, right? Just to, you would think if you just did it like that, but no, we're, we took, remember we put the flap in there. So we're going to take the corner here, shove it underneath that flap, take the corner of this pillow and shove it into that corner. And look at this, right? Okay. Can we get some hearts up in here for this pillowcase that I just made? <laughs> I want to see some hearts flying. <laughs> so that's in there. And this, look at this. This is not going anywhere, friends. It's totally not going anywhere. And this is actually a little big for this particular pillow because I do like mine kind of tight. But like this is mine, my personal pillow right here. Thank you for all the hearts, you guys. <laughs> Uh, this is my personal pillow and you see how tight this is. I like them tight because I don't want no loosey-goosey pillowcase up on my head, you know. I got enough going on here. I don't need to, you know, add to the wrinkles and creases, right? Okay, so this pillow, thank you for all the hearts. Wow, you guys are awesome. So this pillow, my Josie's pillow, okay, from, if you can see how I'm measuring this, it's hard because you know, I'm on, you know, I got all this stuff around me. That noise, if you hear it, it is my Laura Star telling me that she's alive. <laughs> so if I go to seam to seam, it's 25. I'm sorry, 26. So 26 to 26 from seam to seam over that little hump. And then side to side, you know, without pulling real tight, it's about 16 and a quarter. Okay, so I like my pillowcases a little tight. So if you have a standard pillow, this one, the sizes that I give you are totally gonna work and they're also gonna work, you know, on a little bit bigger pillow too. So yeah, okay. So that pillow is done. Now it's time to go into, oh dear, this is too long. 
me set it over there. Now it's time to go into the trim. See the trim on here? Isn't that cute? I mean, we can do up so many of these, right? I mean, here you can see, I this is for my grandson, Ro Ro. We call him Ro, his name is Roscoe. <laughs> and so Ro Ro, he's got some Hot Wheels and some, you know, some Disney cars and you see the flap in here. You can see there, you know, they're just cute. I mean, I don't ever use the pillows that have the big opening that flop anymore. I don't since I've been making these. So let me put this here. Let me grab the fabric. It's right down there on the floor. Let's see if I can't get a pin here. Okay. Sorry, that's probably dusty now. Okay, let me get a drink and check the comments. Oh my goodness, look at all the hearts. You guys are awesome. General purpose, yes, Wendy. Oh my goodness, look at it. Okay, let me go back a little bit in the comments. Ooh, this is wearing me out. I don't know why I get so tired quicker lately. <laughs> I think because I was a little nervous. This live was really hard to get ready for, even though it's such a simple design, you know, because I had to do the prep work first and I just had to think through everything, make sure that I had everything right. Did you all get your, your free downloads, your printouts? Remember to grab those. They're free down in the info box, okay? If you want to make... Yes, French, French seams are amazing. Sailing serendipity. Yes, okay, if you have any questions, I'm looking at the comments right now. Great patience, yeah, that could mean that too, Nancy, for sure. Lots of hearts, I'm getting lots of hearts, oh my goodness, those hearts are so nice. Thank you guys. GP stands for great pillowcases. Oh, Di, you are the girl. Let me tell you, you, that's all like, I was gonna say you are the man or you are the bomb or whatever, but that is perfect for this, right? Give it up for Sister Chick. <laughs> okay, so onward we go. Remember I told you it was gonna be quick. I'm going to change my cheat sheets now to the pillowcase with the trim on it. And just so y'all know, oh, let's see. This is my version blown up so I can see it. <laughs> this is how prepared I get for you, right? I wanted to make sure I could see it. <laughs> okay, so let me pin it right here. And if any of you want information on this right here, this is my epic quilt. I don't know if you can see it from that angle. Check it out. This is my epic round quilt and it is on my channel. It's one of the last videos I did, two videos ago maybe. I, I can't remember one video away, but check it out. This one right here is, is probably my all time favorite quilt that I've ever made. <laughs> now I know I say that every time I make a new quilt, but I really do think that this one, this one is my favorite, I have to say. Die is the winner, yes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Right, that is right. Oh, thank you, Alexandra. I'm just not sure. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. We're gonna do the trim version. Again, you can get two pillowcases out of two yards. And another idea I had, I wrote some notes down because I didn't wanna forget, but another idea I had for you, do you ever come across those vintage uh, sheets? Whether it be a flat sheet or a fitted sheet, you know, one that's in really great shape. I mean, honestly, they, the ones I find are in really great shape. You could take those and cut those up and make the pillowcases out of those. You could mix and match, making the trim, you know, on some of the other, you know, sheet pieces and, you know, mix them up a little bit. I think that would be a ton of fun. I was actually looking through my stash before I did this live to see if I, I had any more of mine because I had, I had people picking me up vintage sheets. They would see them at yard sales and different things. 
But you know what I did? And I am so mad at myself for doing this. So don't do this if you own these sheets. I thought that I was going to use them in a cut up version, okay? So I cut them all up. I cut these beautiful sheets into, I don't even know the sizes. I was so mad at myself when I was digging through for this video and I found them and I was like, no way, why did I do that? Why did I cut these up? They would have been absolutely perfect for pillowcases. I kid you not. They would, they're beautiful too. I should have brought them on just to show you. Some blue roses. I mean, these were pristine uh, vintage sheets. I'm just so upset with myself, so yeah. That's why you never should cut up something until you're ready to do it, unless it's, you know, scraps or something, I don't know. Okay, so this is only one of the two pieces that you can get out of this on the sheet, the two yards. So we're gonna take the base and we're gonna cut it 18 inches by 53 and a half inches, okay? And then we're gonna take our trim piece now I tell you that you need a fat quarter, which you probably really only need, you know, a little more than a half of a half of a quarter, a half quarter, but you kind of get the gist, right? You guys get it. And you're gonna cut this to 11 by 18. You're gonna fold it and just put a memory crease in it, okay? So you're gonna fold it to the wrong side so that the right side is sticking out. All right, so you're gonna take the one of the sides, let's see, let's see if we can get this right again so we don't have to redo this part like we did in the first one. So you're gonna take the one side and you're going to fold a half inch hem in it. So hopefully you can see. So I've just taken this one side, I folded it up half an inch and then I folded it up half an inch again and I've put a press in that. And if you are interested in my Laura Star iron, you know, this bad boy right here. Listen to it. Wow. Is that powerful or what? So if you're interested, be sure and check out the link. I almost forgot to tell you, um, Laura Star and La all things long arm quilting and I have teamed up to give you free shipping for spring. So I'm the only one that I know of so far that has free shipping for the Laura Star. So if you would like to take advantage of that, be sure and click the link. It's down in my info box. Okay, so we've taken this and we've pressed it. Okay, now what are we gonna do? We are going to double, okay, we're gonna double top stitch this. We're gonna go through and take that little hem and just put two lines of stitching down it, making a, you know, double top stitch. And I'm feeling along here where that ledge is because I want to sew from the right side of the fabric because I don't like what the stitches of bobbin thread. I just don't. And then I'm gonna break thread and I'm gonna come back to the start here. And yep. Go ahead and put another row of top stitching in. So nice, nice, we have the one end nicely stitched up. Now, okay, this is where I'm gonna have to move this computer, I think. Oh dear, I'm gonna move it over here. Okay, because I want you guys to see this. Can you see this? I'm like, I feel like I'm penned in over here. <laughs> Maybe if I move this back. Stay, okay. All right, remember, take your fingers and pinch your, you know, so you can see. So now what are we gonna do? We're gonna take our trim and we're gonna open it up like this, see the crease in there? And we're gonna lay it right side up, okay? Then we're going to take the raw edge of the long piece. This is the edge that has the hem in it. This is the raw piece, okay? 
take and lay. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> can you see? Oh, let me pull it back. Okay, can you see it? Hopefully, because I'm looking far away and my I can see what you guys see and I'm trying. So you're going to take and put the right side of the raw edge right along this raw edge right here. You're going to line them up. Just like that, you're going to grab your pins that are, you know, seem like they're a mile away. <laughs> Oops. Okay, line up, raw edge, and you're going to pin. This is where I've incorporated the magic pillowcase, roll-up pillowcase with the hotel pillowcase, and I just love it. It's such a winner. I don't know. All right. So now I have this, right? Can you all see what I did there? Now I have all this, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here at the hem side, and I'm just going to kind of roll this kind of uniformly. I'm going to try to. <laughs> I'm going to even go like this, kind of, just so I can get this together. Now make sure, though, that when you roll this, you can see there, now I've got it all here. Hopefully you can see. See? I'll go like that. Hopefully y'all can see that. I have this rolled right here, right? I'm going to roll it up about where I have the crease on the trim piece. Then I'm going to take the trim piece, right? And I'm going to lift this up. Lift this up till I get to those raw edges. And when I get, you might have to go up a little bit more with that because I want these raw edges to meet nicely. I don't want any pulling. So when I get them met up, I'm then going to unpin what I just pinned. And now I'm going to pin all three layers together. Unpin and pin all three layers. I'm unpinning the two that were pinned, the two layers, and repinning. Come over here to this end, unpin, and repin. So now I'm left with what you all know as the burrito roll up, right? Then I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter inch. So I'm going to line it up there. Yeah, it kind of looks funny. You, you know, kind of lay it on your chest or between your legs, whatever works for you. And then you're just going to backstitch and just continue to sew a quarter inch all the way down. See that? So now I have my tube, right? So how many do I have watching? I have 211 people watching. Oh, let me fix this. Mm. Okay. That's really not me making that noise, you guys. <laughs> That's my Laura star. It sounds funny, I know. Okay, all right. So I have my tube, right? Now I'm gonna go inside my tube and I'm gonna pull out, you know my base of my pillowcase. This is the magic, friends, right here. This is the magic of the hotel pillowcase. This is the magic of any pillowcase. <laughs> I think on one of my tutorials, I think I have it with a flange too, so you can learn how to do that. But this one is very specific to the hotel pillowcase. Okay, so you can see there, everything hopefully. So you can see I have now, I have this attached, right? across here and here, and there is no visible seam on the front or the back. Well, there's a, there's a seam, but you know, there's no seam allowance showing. So I'm gonna move this now over here. And now this, I am gonna have to press this, you know, on camera. So you're just going to take it, and again, make sure that you have pressed out all of that seam allowance. You don't want any puckering right there at all, like zero, friends, zero. 
And it's really easy to do too, to get it. Oh, that stupid thread. Oh, I got a thread sticking out. So I'm just pulling this away from the seam allowance. And there we go, you see that? <laughs> With the Laura Star, you have to release the steam initially if you haven't used it in a minute because it it uses a double tank to heat the um, water. So, so you're going to flip it over and then just press it that way. I got thread sticking out. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. Flip it over again. Oh, this fabric too, a shout out to, oh my goodness, Terry Bishop, I think, sent me this fabric um, in the mail. She just, you know, she wanted someone that she knew was going to use it. She's one of my followers and she emailed me and had all this stuff she sent me of baby girl patterns. And I haven't seen her a while in any of the chats, so I don't know if she's still sewing or, or what. But yeah, shout out to Terry. This is part of that fabric she had sent me. Oh, Terry, you are here! <laughs> right? Isn't this the fabric that you sent me? She says I lurk. <laughs> is this the fabric, right? This was one of the ones that you sent me. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize you could see out my window. I just now looked at the camera and you can see out my window. Well, yes, Terry, I knew it. I knew this was one of yours. I love this fabric. It was so soft, perfect for a pillowcase. You're probably kicking yourself in the rear for giving it, right? Because you're probably thinking, man, this would work really good for, <laughs> I don't know. I could send it to you if you want. If you need a pillowcase, girl, I got you. Okay, let me... What's voodoo? I don't know what that is. That's some weird, oh, voodoo stuff with the seam and the folded fabric. I know, right, Alexandra? It's so awesome. Okay, so we're not done yet though. So now, okay, pretend like this was, you know, the one that we just did if you were here for that one. We're now going to take the hem side, right? And we're going to fold it in about six to six and a half inches. And we're going to give that a press. And I did have that pre-pressed prior to hitting the film button. And we're going to just, can you see y'all? I feel like I'm getting forward or something. Did I move the table? So then that's folded in six, six and a half inches. And then I'm going to fold it up to meet the top here like so look how cute that pink is oh so darling right i mean really thanks to miss terry i'm so glad you got to see that i'm using i've used i think all of your stuff your ribbons and everything you sent to me okay so i'm just evening this up now before you start to sew that eighth of an inch down, grab your handy dandy measuring tool here and just measure that you're anywhere between 25 and 26 inches, I'd say. Because here's the thing, the reason why it's not perfect. My seam allowance on my machine is different than your seam allowance. I may go a fat quarter inch or a slim quarter inch, or you might go a perfect quarter inch, or you might do a half an inch because you're not, you know, you're new at sewing and you really didn't know what to do at the sewing machine or it might be all crazy i don't know but just make sure that you know it's when you fold it up that it measures at least you know between 25 and 26 inches that's going to give you enough room to put a standard to a little bit bigger of a pillow into your case so and honestly you can fudge with this piece right here the piece that you fold in at six to six and a half inches you can fold that in at six inches if you want. You won't have a deep, you know, pocket there, but as deep as this one anyways, you know, but it'll still work. When I first started making these, I only folded them down, I think about four inches. And I found that I needed a little bit more. So 
you may need less or more, you know, I don't know. So once you get those together and everything is right side out, you're going to pop those pins in along the side. And let's check to make sure that we are not going to, yeah, you know, that we're going to make it to the back. <laughs> I may cut and trim afterwards. I'm just going to put those two pins in right there. I'm not going to worry about the rest. So I'm going to go, I think, oh, look at that. That is not right. I need to cut that. I don't know what I was doing before I started this live, but it definitely wasn't making sure that those were even, right? Okay. So I'm going to just trim this. You know, use a big ruler though, if you have one. This is just one that I have close by me. So I'm just trimming off because I can see fabric on the back and everything is not as it seems as it should be. So I'm just cleaning this up. Okay, let's check this one. That looks good. How's the comments going? What we got? Only 197 in the in here. Yes, Terry. Everybody say thank you to Terry because she was part of today's tutorial and she didn't even know it. Thank you so much, Terry, for the use of your fabric. And she gives away good fabric too, let me tell you. <laughs> she really does. And I, I made some for Dress a Girl. She actually gave it to me for Dress a Girl. And I did make some for Dress a Girl. Got some of your fabric. And then I had this left for, and I made my Josephine a little dress too with some of your fabric. And then I had this left and I thought, oh, this would be perfect because it's nice and soft. It really is. You can tell it's good fabric. Okay, I think that's good. All right, let me get a pin in here. All right, let's get that eighth of an inch, eighth to a quarter inch or so. Back stitch. We're almost done, friends. Okay, we're gonna flip it and I start from the top. And we'll do that little move here in a minute, the new thing so that you don't see that French seam. Did you all get your free download? I hope so. Make sure you go get your free pillow download for a standard pillowcase. So I cut those pretty good, so I'm not going to trim any, I don't think. At least not on camera. Maybe that one. Maybe that one. And then I'm going to jump into the comments and see what's going on. So go in your pillowcase and just pull these corners out. Get your pokey tool and you're going to turn it uh, wrong side out. Make sure that these are all the way popped out. Otherwise, you're not going to have a nice clean corner and we want clean corners, right? So here goes this new thing. So. When I made these before, I would have you just stop at this point and pinch and sew all the way down both sides at a quarter inch, encasing that seam in. But that's not what you're going to do. You're going to do one more step, which is so silly to me that I didn't think of this before. You're going to take this flap and you're going to flip it over. 
top. So now you are looking at all of the out the you're looking at all of the wrong side of the fabric now. And you're going to take and poke these out. And this is the part where you got to make sure that these corners are out. So take a pin and if you can take your fingers and pinch the you know, so you can see up close if you need to. I'm saying that now because one of the viewers did not know in the last live stream that she could go on her phone and take her fingers and pinch it so that it, you know, she could see what in the heck was happening on the screen, right? And then come over here and pop this corner out here. Oh my gosh, I don't know why I can't grab that. There we go. So once you get it out, you know, everything's poked out, then you're going to grab your iron, set this over here, and you're going to pull those seams as much as possible. Roll them out with your fingers. Remember in the last one I said roll them, pull them, pull at that, yank at it, because they're going to get caught in there if you don't and really try to roll those out. I mean, you're gonna do a lot of feeling with your fingertips to get that right. And then you're gonna grab your weapon of choice, right? I mean, I could literally hurt somebody with this. Someone better come try to come in here because, you know, yeah, I got it. <laughs> My Laura Star will definitely take care of them. And then I'm just gonna roll that seam out And then just give that, I'm not giving it a big press, just enough, just enough so that I can um, get that, you know, French seam in there nicely. Right? Di knows, Di knows all about uh, what kind of a weapon this is. You're getting a lot of commercials. Oh no. Okay, so I'm sorry about that. That's actually how YouTubers get paid though, really. I mean, it kind of comes along with the tutorial, or with the, with the tutorial, I was gonna say. It comes along with the territory <laughs> and the tutorial, I guess, right? Are you guys getting a lot of ads? What, every few minutes? <sighs> I'm sorry. But that actually is how the YouTubers get paid. It's, you know, it's through the ads. It is what it is. I, I'm so sorry. I don't know. YouTube's been pushing my videos a lot lately. And so maybe they're thinking people will watch them and they'll get them to watch an ad. I don't know. I apologize. So it's nicely pressed out. We have all wrong sides are out, right? Right on, Terry. Me too. I do too. I pay for zero ads, girls. Zero. <laughs> if I had to watch all the ads, oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm going to backstitch here. It just makes for a nice clean sew when you have all that press. I'm going to flip this and hopefully not run out of bobbin thread. I didn't even look at that before I started. I'm going to be coming in the comments in a minute, so get your questions ready. Okay, I will clip the, oh, excuse me, I burped. Oh my goodness, I usually edit those out, so sorry. <laughs> I'm really not rude. <laughs> okay, so you have, <laughs> this is real life friends, right? I don't know. Hey Tracy, nice to see you on a live. Tiffany's in the house, Tiffany's Quilting Life. Y'all need to go check out all my YouTuber friends, Tiffany and Di, and I saw so Becca was in there. Who else is in there? I don't know, Di and Tiff, if you see any 
uh, other YouTuber friends, go ahead and tell the people. Yeah, Lavender, check it out. I mean, but then, you know, we won't get paid then if everybody's got YouTube premium, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so go ahead and turn right side out now. And then when you do that, you're going to have that flap on the inside. Oh, I got to stand up, friends. I need gravity, right? Oh, there's my cheat sheet I couldn't find earlier. It's on the floor. No wonder. Oi. Okay, so take your pokey tool and pop out these corners. And I see a couple threads sticking through. No biggie though, just trim them up. Not, your pillow's not gonna fall apart or nothing like that. And then check this out, friends. Look at this. You have an adorable, I don't know how to show you this without, oh, this part, yeah. Check that out. Look, no, see, no French seam showing, right? I mean, why didn't I know this before? I don't know, but I didn't. So now that I know it, you all know it, right? So I'm gonna grab this. Oh dear. Let's, should we use her pillow again? I've got the my pillow in there. I've got my tallow pillow there, or tallalay or whatever it is. I forget. It's that rubber tree. Don't apologize. Make your money. That's right. Michael Girls needs to make some money, right? Oh, let's see. Oh, I know, I love Sister Chicks too. She's great. She's, she's awesome. Okay, so let me lay that there. Let me, let me move this beast to Laura Star out of the way. And let me grab and shove this in here so you can see this, how cute. So you can see that you can do all kinds of stuff. I mean, you can make it literally, you could do the Steelers. I don't know if you're a Steelers fan, my husband is, so. Yeah, you know, I mean, think of the possibilities. I know you all have yards and yards and yards of stash, right? And it's probably all good cotton, decent cotton. Even if it's not, use it. I mean, really, just use it because we don't want to leave all this cotton fabric, you know? If we, if we bought it, we bought it because we loved it for some reason. Why not put it into a pillowcase, really? I mean, I just, the more and more I get older and whatnot, I start thinking, this pillow is a terrible looking pillow, by the way. I need to get Josie a new one. Um, it's just got no <laughs> body to it. <laughs> what a terrible pillow. Oh, I'm bearing all my dirty laundry out here. Okay, so, I mean, just we have to just use our stuff, really. Look at that. I mean right it's too cute it's too cute i'm sorry look there's that the flaps in there you've got no seam showing here i mean this makes this is just this makes the pillow and then the great part about the hotel pillow look throw me some hearts if you're loving my pink pillow <laughs> whoops i didn't mean to hit my uh, did i hit that and it sounded funny give me some hearts for this pillow right here We'll give our hearts to Terry. Our heart goes out to Terry Bishop tonight for her donation of her pink fabric that will now lay my head on it. <laughs> oh my gosh, now I'm getting a little goofy. But yeah, super cute, right? I mean, who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want it? I want it. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> So let me see, how can I lay this so that you can still see it and I can get on the comments now. So how long did that take me? And plus I talked like a, you know, all through that too. Oh, someone gave me lots of hearts. Sister Chicks did. Darling, right? I know. Yes, Debbie. DC Watashi. Diana, yes. Ann Kerr. Do you have cutting dims for Smodel? Oh, no. I don't. Smaller toddler pillow. No, but you can easily figure out, you know, just cut it and fold it the way that you want it so that it'll lay, you know, the size of the uh, pillow. Honestly, if you just measure the pillow you're, and just use those measurements, you'll make a nice tight pillowcase like this one. I love them tight like that. So 
I mean, they're really, as long as you know the, uh, you know, kind of the dimensions of what you're going to use, you're going to use the same techniques to actually, you know, follow through with this pattern. I mean, it's so simple. It's crazy how simple. I, I'm not even showing you all the ones that I've made. I've made so many hotel pillowcases that I just, I, I think I have a, a problem. <laughs> I really do think I have an issue because I just love to make them. I look in my stash and I'm like, oh my word, this fabric needs to be used and we need to use it now because if we don't use it, it's just not gonna get used. I mean, what are the chances of me pulling that out for a special quilt? Maybe, but if I'm making a special quilt, I'm probably buying brand new special fabric for it. So, I mean, just, you know, I have to pick and choose what you're gonna do, but yeah. Barb, thank you, yes. Debbie, super cute, I know. Uh, thank you, Vintage Style by Joe. CC Pratt's, give, or CCP Parrot. Parrot's given lots of hearts. Elizabeth, Michael Graham says nice. Or, yeah, Graham. Becky Spencer, thank you, Tracy, so adorable. I know, professional, right? I think they look really professional. I actually think that they look better than a store-bought pillowcase. I'm just gonna throw that out there. They really do. In the US, anyways, you are not gonna find a pillowcase that has that flap on the inside to keep your pillow in. And that's the biggest problem. I mean, even hotels, some don't use the hotel pillowcase. Even though that's the first place I've ever seen one, uh, they not all hotels use them. A lot of them just keep the flaps open. And that is the US. We're far, far behind. I think they don't use it in the US really because it does take a little bit more fabric. What do you all think? Tell me in the comments. Why wouldn't you use that method? The British use it. So I don't, or British, is British in Europe, is that the same thing? I don't mean to sound stupid, but I don't know. But I know in my last hotel pillowcase tutorial, I got a lot of comments from people that lived in Europe, I think. Is that right? The cost, yeah, Terry, yep. Because it, it's more, more fabric, I guess. Yes, Donna downloaded the instructions. Yeah, they're just bullet points, really, Donna. So I hope that they're helpful along with this video tutorial, too. Oh, craft, wait a minute, let me go back. Crafty Gemini has this? The hotel pillowcase? Does she have this one? Because I thought I was the only one that had the hotel pillowcase tutorial, but I don't know, I could be wrong. I don't know. First place I saw it was in a hotel and like I came home and immediately drafted it up. <laughs> Cause I'm like, this is too cool. But yeah, if any, oh, Canada, Canada. Okay, DC's in Canada. I didn't know you were in Canada, really? Okay. Um, so in Canada, they have them as well. I don't, the U.S. just never, never, I mean, you can go and look in the stores, but you won't find them. I don't even know if anybody wants to do a quick search while we're on here, if someone wants to Google um, this type of pillowcase that's for sale. It would be really cool to see how much one would be. They're probably not going to be a hotel pillowcase per se called that, but I don't know what they would be called. Like an envelope, would it be an envelope pillow? I don't know what it, I don't know what you would look up, but if someone wants to look that up, well, let me see, am I way behind? I, okay, um, oh, okay, DC says, all right. I'll watch as I sew, yes. We use them in Denmark. Is it, it how do you say your name? Is it Inga, Ing, Ing, Inge, Ing? Apparently you have, what? Apparently you have Sin B Odd pillowcases. I don't know what that means. Dai's talking in code again. Inga, okay. So Inga, you live in Denmark and you have them in Denmark. What are they called exactly? And like if I was to look one up to purchase one, because I know a lot of my followers, they sell 
at craft shows in different places in the summertime. And I'm thinking that the hotel pillowcase would be a great, great addition to their little store. They could sell them, but I don't know how much they would go for. So Ikea has an envelope style, but it comes with the comforter sets, okay. Two for 49, what, girls? We are in, and boys, guys, we are in the wrong business if they're selling these pillowcases. Woo, I got, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, I've got $1,000 worth of pillowcases up in my house. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, dear. That's just an ordinary pillowcase. Is it really, Cassie? What are we like? We're just like, we don't know what we're doing over here in the U.S., do we? It says Amadaz. Oh, my goodness. $49. That's insanity. I made many burrito, but I love these with the hotel flap. Yes. Maybe I should call it the hotel flap. That's a good idea. Because I don't know if people know what I, say, what I mean when I say hotel pillowcase. <laughs> but I like that idea of the hotel flap. I cannot believe that, Cassie. Is it for real? It's just an ordinary pillowcase everywhere else but the U.S.? That's insane. Oh, okay. Ikea will sell them as it's a European company. There's Rose's Discount Store in Montgomery that has microfiber pillowcases, two for a dollar. Were They were envelope closing. Oh, well... They're probably not as good as ours, though, right? Our good cotton ones. <laughs> and I like the way that this one, I can choose not to have a trim, but give it that faux kind of trim pillowcase look with that double stitching with that nice big fold over hem. That's the reason why I did that. You don't technically have to have that big hem on there, but I just think it just gives it a really nice professional look. And you can see when I did this one, the seam is not hidden on this one. See that? I just, I found out after I did this one that you could hide the seam. And I was like, oh, my mind was blown. So Belk, they were selling them for Christmas patterns with the flap. They were selling patterns for this. Pocket pillowcase. Oh, pocket pillowcase? English pillowcase. Now, I have heard that. I have heard that, DC. I have. So, Debbie says, is it $49 for a pair of PCs or for each one? I think they said, what did they say? Oh, my goodness. Ritz Carlton Shop has them standard size $94. Okay, when I hear that, we're in the wrong business. I need to start selling these uh, hotel flat pillowcases out of my garage. Who's with me? <laughs> we could have a sweat shop over here in Ohio, right? Ah, I do not know a name for them. We just call them pillowcase. <laughs> How cute. Aw, that's cute, Inga. Yeah, probably. I mean, well, I mean, the standard ones here, they're all open. I mean, it's, I don't like them. I have one set that are high quality cotton hotel flap. I bought at Costco. And well, now you know CCP that you can make them, right? And you can just grab from your stash. I mean, these are indeed the best pillowcases I've ever used. I've, you know, I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to have had a few pillowcases in my day. <laughs> and I love the hotel flap. I love it. Jennifer says, me, I don't know. What do you say, me, Jennifer? Uh, DJ Walker says, I would love you and Sister Chick and April to do a retreat. It would be a blast. I know it would. Well, keep your ear to the ground on that one because your wish might just come true. Hmm. That video that I told you about has to make an English pillow that's at four years old and she doesn't have any of the French seam, seam showing. She doesn't. Oh, well, she was way ahead of me then. So very easy. She used to teach PBS. Oh, really? I didn't know that. 
I'm with you selling pillowcases. Come on, Jennifer, we'll do it out of my garage, right? <laughs> Denise says, so very easy. And Jean True Love have YouTube videos from six years ago. Wow, I never seen those, just so y'all know. They just refer to it as a flap. Oh my goodness. And here I was probably thinking I made it up. Well, I couldn't have made it up because it's already been around, but I didn't know that they had those. Well, that's good. I follow a great many people then. <laughs> Thank you, sweet lady. I made two magic PC pillowcases for grandsons. Yes, that's so good for the grands, right? Following your video, it's so much fun to see you live. I made a stack of cut-ups for people for Christmas, but only finished three. Well, now with the new one, though, I don't know if you watched this one all the way through at the beginning, but I showed how to um, make a bigger flap and how to hide that French seam at the very beginning. Ooh, Sarah wants to know how long have I been sewing? I'm going to make some, Terry says. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Terry, you don't have your stash though, right? <laughs> um, Sarah, I've been sewing, I don't know, for, oh dear, I don't know, is it 10 years now even? I started late in life, so. I didn't, and then the minute I, I was so against sewing because my mom sewed, she made all my dresses, made all my Barbie clothes when I was little and I was so against it. And then I guess it was about 10 years ago or more. I can't remember, or no, it had, no, it had to be more than that because my husband and I have been married. So, cause he was there when this happened. My mother gifted me a sewing machine at Christmas time. And so I'm going to say, Thinking back, it had to be 15 years now. I mean, the years get away from me the older I get. I think I'm standing still or something and I'm not. <laughs> but my mom gifted me a sewing machine brand new from, uh, I think it was a singer and for Christmas. And I said, I'm never gonna sew. I, you know, I don't know why she gave it to me. And all the ride home after that Christmas gift, after I opened it, I was like, to my husband, I was being kind of ungrateful. <laughs> and I'm like, my mother knows I don't sew. Why in the world would she ever gift me a sewing machine? I mean, I will never use it. Like I had zero, zero interest in it. Sat down in my basement for almost a year after that Christmas. And my husband, something on his pants needed sewn. And he was like, babe, why don't you go down and get the sewing machine and, you know, and you can try it maybe and fix this. And I'm like, no. I have no, 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 I don't want to. I have no desire whatsoever. I said, if you want to, you go ahead. Otherwise, just gonna sit there. God love his heart. He went down there, opened the box, set it all up. He, he did the bobbin. He did everything, read the manual, and he fixed his pants. Well, he left it sitting up, right? I mean, this is a great story. I love this story. So I'm, you know, I said it in one of my other lives. Um, so if you're hearing it again, I'm sorry. So it sat down in the basement, but it was still all set up with the thread and everything. And Pinterest was really going strong at that time, about 15 years ago or so or more. I can't remember now. And I had a Pinterest board and I kept seeing where all these people were making these skirts, you know, these A-line skirts. And I'm like, oh, that looks so cute. Like, and I just thought, well, maybe I could make one. You know, I do have that sewing machine that's all set up. Maybe I could just try it and see. Well, I tried it and I made it and I was like, I was blown away. I couldn't believe, I was so proud of myself, I think, that I actually made something that I could wear out in public. Like it was crazy. I was like, oh my word. And I have been zero to 10,000 ever since. I couldn't get enough of my sewing machine. I burnt up that sewing machine because I, sewed so much. I was, I remember I was in the middle of a project. I was like, oh yeah, I would, I was one of those sewists that didn't do math and didn't follow a pattern. And I'm still to this day, I'm like that. It's hard for me to follow anything. I have to make it reinvent the wheel myself. So all the girls were going in my church, were going to church camp, right? And they all wanted shorts and skorts and skirts and different things, you know, to wear. So I'm like, ooh, I got you. And so here is all these teens lined up and I'm measuring them and I'm like, okay, I got you, I got you. And I was making, 
I was making stuff out of stuff I was getting at the Goodwill. I was just doing all kinds of stuff. Well, I burnt that thing up to where my sweet husband went to Walmart and bought me another sewing machine, which was my brother that I started my sewing channel with. If you go back to one of my very first videos, I was using, I forget uh, the number on it right now, but it was their quilting machine from Walmart. And he brought it home because I burned it up. I was in the middle of making these squirts and I'm like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And so then he got me that and I started sewing on that. And then I got an even better, bigger brother. And then I got an even bigger, better Juki. And, you know, the rest was total history. I'm telling you, I can't get enough of sewing. It has been a total outlet for me. And I know that it probably is for some of you too. Am I right? If I go to the comments, I'm sure, you know, that yes, I do oil my Juki um, DC. I take care of this thing like it's my grandchild, trust it. <laughs> I really do too. I mean, it's almost like I kind of, now you're supposed to do the bobbin every time. Now I may do it every other time sometimes. I will, you know, throw that out there. But as far as these top holes go, I get like an intuition to where it's time to oil these. I kid you not. It's some kind of thing like I am one with this machine. It's the weirdest thing, right? But yeah, this is like um, one of my grandchildren. So I love to sew. I don't know what else to say. I absolutely love to sew. I've never loved anything here on this earth like this, the way I do with sewing. Quilting, sewing, anything, making these pillowcases. I'll make a hundred of them before I feel like I'm totally satisfied with that. You know, I've gotten that dopamine hit a hundred times from that sewing project. And then it's on to like a quilt project. And, you know, what am I going to make next? How am I going to cut that? What am I going to do? Like this one right here, this quilt was a total outlet for me. I had so much fun making this quilt. It was unreal. So, but yeah. It is Tiffany, right? I know. I'm with Tiffany. I know she talks about it too, how it soothes her in a special way. It's, I don't know. It's like that itch that gets scratched every time that you turn your sewing machine on. I'll be sitting in another room somewhere and I'll be thinking of what I want to sew next. And I'll just walk in here, just to walk in here. And I'll be in here for hours after that. That's what happens once you raise your kids, you know, and you just got grandkids. You will, you will be in your sewing room for hours. Yep. It makes me feel old. <laughs> Same here. I've been sewing since I was little. Yep. I mean, I should get some pictures. My mother, she made everything for me. I, I remember I had a sixth grade graduation and she made me this long dress in blue roses, I think it was, or some kind of flower. Big ruffle on the bottom. I mean, we're talking shoulder to floor. I mean, this thing was massive. I don't, it must have taken, now that I think about it, probably four yards, five yards of material to make. I remember it being kind of heavy too. It was just cotton. And I should get that picture <laughs> and share it on my channel. I mean, I loved this dress. I thought I was just like a princess in it and my mom made it for me, but she made me a ton of stuff. She made all my Barbie clothes. Like I was one of those kids that played with Barbies and babies and all that. Did you guys too? I don't know if it's a sewer thing or not, but I played with Barbies and all kinds of stuff. Did you guys? Yes, it is. Creative mindset, it's the best outlet. Even when I work, go to work and people are driving me crazy, I just go downstairs and pet some fabric, <laughs> right? Who said that? Wait a minute. Oh, Debbie said that, right? Deb, we'll just go like this. It feels so good. <laughs> people probably think we are crazy. Oh, you two DC Barbies. Yep. I loved it. 60 years, Auntie L's been sewing. Your dad taught you. How sweet is that, right? Actually, my mom didn't even teach me how to sew. So after that, after I, you know, started sewing the skirts and then I made my first quilt for my, for my daughter, uh, she was graduating from college. And so I made her a quilt for her uh, graduation and it was just full on. It is soothing, Debbie. 
I've only been sewing quilts for four years. My favorite place. Yep, sewing room. Mom made me Barbie claws. I know, they were the most awesome, weren't they? My mom would even crochet them too. 57 years, wow. Diana played with Barbies. I would help my sister dress her Barbie sometimes. Robert, way to go, Robert. I'm a welder, but my mind is sewing. Yep, I know. Mom sewed my clothes, Barbie clothes, and even knitted. Yep, my mom did too. I wish I still had mine. I don't. My mom made Barbie clothes and Barbie house decor for me. I could not even begin to work with. I know it is small. GG. Yep. They are small, tiny stuff. Went on a major shopping trip this weekend. I'm going off to pet the fabric. Well, Zai, you have fun petting your fabric. Uh, son moved out at automatic. Girl, vintage, are you a girl? Let me see, Joe. yep, your picture looks like a girl. I'm like, girl, this same thing here, this was my son's bedroom, and the minute he left for college, I'm like, I pounced, it's mine. Even when he came home on break, I still, I'm like, I'm sorry, son, you're gonna have to go somewhere else in the house and sleep, because this is mama's room now, this is mama's playroom, this is my play hut. Valerie, 38 years. Oh, wow. Quilting, 19. I have made a large wardrobe of Barbie and doll clothes for my grands. I would cry if my Juki didn't sew. So clean after every use. That's right. I'm constantly cleaning this thing. I get it. Yes. I've been sewing for 40 years. My grandmother, she taught you, Belinda. Yep. Did everyone take the quiz, or not quiz, but did everyone take the, uh, what do you call it, the poll up top? It's in blue right there, make sure you take it. We've had 332 votes if you wanna take a look and see. I wanted to know, oh my goodness, only 2% have made the TSC's hotel pillowcases. I know I got more hotel pillow gang people than that, come on. So click that. If you've made my hotel pillowcases before, you need to click that. Okay, someone just clicked it. Now it's up to 3%. <laughs> Let's see, the 29% have not at all. Regular ones, 34. The magic roll up, 35%. Oh, oh gosh, I don't know what I'm doing here. I click one thing and my whole screen changes. I secretly love playing Barbies, but I was a tom girl on skateboards and love motorcycles and stuff. Nobody knew I had a big Barbie collection. <laughs> That's cute. I wonder if it's a, you know, if it's a sewing thing, you know, us having Barbies and stuff. I don't know. It's interesting. My youngest moved. Oh, that, oh, you took the entire upstairs. Ooh. Gigi took the entire upstairs. I still own the Singer Featherweight. I learned to sew on. Yeah, those are nice. Buying fabric and sewing are two different hobbies. I have these new cups. I mean, I don't have them for sale yet, but you can see this was one that the girl messed up on. It says enough talking already. I had ordered some. And so it's kind of messed up over there, but I had them put on the back. It says quilter a noun it it's like it's in a dictionary it says someone that is prone to bouts of excitement when surrounded by fabric and others of their kind <laughs> that goes along with that comment about the fabric sewing 60 years what oh i thought you said you were around when the titanic sank wait a minute nancy said sewing for 60 years my stash could sink the titanic <laughs> Mine's starting to, I bring over my mom's stash little by little, and oh my word, she got so much. Oh, let's see, 60 years. Made my first one following shabby fabrics, okay. 
Me too, Nancy. I have two sewing rooms. Two? You lucky dog. <laughs> My husband made me move across the country and I told him I get two rooms. I have two rooms now, Yvette says. Nice. I own the Ken the Kenmore that my dad taught me to sew on. How sweet. Yes, I give them as gifts to my grandchildren so far, Rebecca. I haven't given, I don't, I don't think, I think one of these, the other one, like this one I think is going to my mom. Well, this is, okay, so this is from my mom's stash right here. It's got little tiny, I think, pansies on it. Honestly, it's all, I mean, let me look here. The Steelers is from my mom's stash. The pansies are from my mom's stash. We know that Terry Bishop, she gave me this fabric. She's in the chat tonight. The cuff or the trim is my mom's stash. This right here is from my mom's stash. This uh, yellow with the confetti on it. This fabric right here, believe it or not, is Crafty Gemini's fabric she had for sale. And when my mom was buying fabric back in the day, she, you know, bought, I have a ton of, Gemini fabric, or uh, what's her name? Ge um, oh gosh, Gemini, right? Crafty Gemini's fabric. So that's Crafty Gemini right there. And so this is the other half of that. Uh, the Hot Wheels is from my mom's stash and the blue stripe is from my mom's stash. This right here is from mine, all the princesses. And all I did here was take and like do patchwork. I took all the princesses that I had in my stash cut them into pieces and fit them together so that Josephine, my granddaughter, could have like all this. But her most favorite thing though is what I put on the inside and it's Buzz Lightyear. She loves Buzz Lightyear, right? It's crazy, but she does. And him in particular, she, I don't, maybe she's gonna be an astronaut someday, I don't know. But so I have, so I kind of, split those two fabrics up and then folded them in half. So you can do that too, keep that in mind. But you can, you know, you can do your little patchwork. You can get a little creative there, right? So yeah, uh, my mom's stash. I have a ton of my mom's stash. And we're not talking just little pieces. We're talking, we have like, you know, we have pieces, right? In order for me to make this, you know, two yards, two yards, <laughs> two yards and I have a ton of the Steelers. Oh my word. I'll be sewing for a long time. I'll be sewing up my mom's stash for sure. Okay, what else we got here? Are we about ready? Are we getting tired yet, you guys? We ready to get off? Is it a thing for Tracy's mom to make their elementary grad dress? Mine was baby blue, was it? Oh my goodness, Tracy. Yeah, maybe. Oh, where do I keep? Okay, so maybe I do have another sewing room, <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> so Tiffany wants to know, where do you keep all your stash, Tracy? Okay, so when my youngest daughter went to college, <laughs> which is this room right next here to this room, I have turned, at first it was a playroom for my grandkids, right? And then it turned into like a sleepy room kind of where my grandkids could take a nap. And then half grandkids room, half stash room. And now, <laughs> and now my stash is overtaking the room next door. So I technically guess I have two. They're not, well, I don't sew over there, but I do have my big, huge cutting table in this room next year. And it is sitting, it's, set up but that room is kind of dark so I don't ever film in there so it's kind of like a catch-all room honestly but yeah my stash is over here girl just so you know maybe one day I'll give you guys a little look-see over there but it I mean honestly I've got stash over here I've got stash in there I, I got too much so yeah okay so like me a fabric room yeah kind of Kind of. It's kind of like the fabric room, the, oh, the batting room, the backing room, the, yeah, the whatever fusibles room. <laughs> you name it, it's over there. What machine do I use? Are you asking me? This is a um, Juki uh, TLQVP. And my link is down below in the info box if anybody wants one. You get a free gift from Juki Junkies every time you buy 
any of their machines. They're so good to me. Juki Junkies is the best. I can't even give them enough props. They are so good to me. And this machine, I've not maintenanced it one time. I just take really good care of it and it's not given me one ounce of back talk ever. <laughs> You want to switch up your singer, Happiest Girl says. Hi, Stephanie. Now you know why I have the upstairs. My main sewing room was the kids' playroom. My long, oh my goodness, you have a long arm too. They have the front room now as their playroom. Yeah, we got to do what we got to do to house our stuff, right? Oh, Sarah, where did you donate it to? There's lots of people in my chat that would just love a donation of fabric. <laughs> right, Terry? I want to. I'm looking back at the comments because I didn't want to miss any. Terry says, why don't you just knock the wall out? Okay, so I've told my husband several times. So I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. But that if I knock this wall out, I'm thinking, where's my design wall going to be? Because there's only one window on the front of the house, like this window that you see here. Like at least in this room, there's a window here and there's one behind the camera. But this one only has one. There's not very much light and there's the walls. There's not much wall space. So I don't know. I would love to knock the wall out. Hello, Carrie. Quilting Guild, very good. So I guess if you belong to a quilting guild, you could always donate fabric there like Sarah did. All right, Sister Chick, you go ahead. I'm going to be closing down here in a minute. It's been 101 minutes I've been on. Wow. Okay. All right, y'all. Well, I guess I'm going to take off here and clean up my room and I guess go pet my fabric in the room next door. <laughs> <laughs> like Di's going to do. No, I'm kidding. I don't pet my fabric. You know, only when I iron it or sew with it. <laughs> She's heading toward the whatever room, Joe says. Yep. Sarah says, LOL. Do not knock the wall out. It's going to reduce your resale value you need for the nursing home. Girl, who's going to the nursing home? I'm not, I'm not. And you know what, as far as like the resale value, whatever, um, you know what, you only live once, right? And well, I live, if I don't live the way that makes me happy right now, then, you know, is life really worth it? No, you gotta do what makes you happy. I've learned that. I have totally learned that. Bye, Brenda. All right, how about we give the, the chat some hearts before we leave? Hit that little heart button. I don't know what it does. Live for Jesus. Absolutely, Sarah. Absolutely live for Jesus. <laughs> Sewing goddess, Terry. No, thank you, Terry. I'm so glad you were in the chat tonight to see your, your uh, fabric go to good use. Thanks for the great pillowcase pattern. Thank you. Hi, Tracy. I love you. Hi, Karen. I don't know if that's my Aunt Karen or not. Is that my Aunt Karen? I can't tell because it just says Karen. Nancy, lots of hearts. Oh, I love it. Hit the little heart button. You see the little hearts going up the side if you hit them. Take care, Trace. You too, Robert. Oh, yes. Hi, Aunt Karen. <laughs> I'm just now getting off my live. You'll have to go back and watch if you didn't get, to, if you didn't get here right away. Oh, you guys are awesome with all the hearts. Thank you so much. Be sure and take the poll up top. I'll give you a few minutes here before I cut off. If you haven't taken the poll, take it. We've had 360 votes. And only 3% have made TSE's hotel pillowcases. That is a disgrace. Hopefully that number changes by the next time I do another live for this anyways, right? YouTube told you that you're abusing the heart icon, really? How dare they? My goodness, don't let them tell you that. <sighs> All right, y'all, I'm going to take off. Um, it's been a pleasure. 
I hope you make one of these. If you do, email me pictures at thesewingchannel33 at gmail.com. I'll put it here in the chat. The Sewing Channel 33 at gmail.com. Send me lots of pictures of anything that you make of mine. A lot of people send them through Instagram and I never see them really when they send them because I'm not that active over there. Loves ya. Loves you too. Send me pics. There we go. How's that? There's my email. 